Hey guys, my name is Nico and welcome back to my channel. talk about a capsule wardrobe. Now a capsule wardrobe is your basic wardrobe, some of your essentials, those key pieces that go with everything. Now what I'm watching other YouTubers right now, or at least a lot of them, it's a lot of invest your money in these quality pieces. And as much as I agree with that, because I definitely do, you want your core pieces that you're gonna wear all the time to be really good quality. I don't necessarily think that that one has to mean expensive, all the time at least, or two, that that caters to everybody. A lot of people can't spend three or four hundred dollars on a pair of jeans. A lot of people can't spend thousand dollars on a leather jacket. And so I want to talk about a little bit more of an affordable, what a capsule wardrobe can look like, but also, again, if I've had them for years and they have lasted me forever, but they weren't the most expensive, that's just true to show that my statement stands here. So I really want to discuss the concept of an affordable, more general, user-friendly capsule wardrobe that can still be really, really fashion forward. You can still achieve all the same looks without feeling like if you're standing next to somebody who is wearing really expensive clothing that you don't necessarily look as good standing next to them. I want you to still feel amazing and great that you found something that's essentially the exact same but at a much more affordable price. Again, granted, if, I mean, if you have the money to spend, go ahead. So that's what we're gonna be talking about and let's just get into it. So one of the first things that I'm going to wanna talk to you guys about today is denim. So denim is timeless, classic. It's never gonna change. You're always gonna be looking at denim. It's gonna be part of your wardrobe for the rest of your life. I would assume. I would just say that denim is one of those things where, you know, there's all these rules. Good denim shouldn't be comfortable. It's going to cost you an arm and a leg. When I look at denim that is, say, 100% cotton denim, and I mean, that's to say, again, quality wise, you're spending more, more likely, on 100% cotton denim. However, for my body type, a mom jean is amazing. Hug the butt, has a smaller waist, a little bit more room in the thigh, and tapers down a little bit. I have a very specific body type that does require, I would say, some of the love that I've been getting from a mom jean. Zara has mom jeans that are 100% cotton, which are the ones that you guys are seeing right now here, and I love them. I bought them in four colors because they were perfect and great, and they feel amazing. They feel like quality. They, I think they were like $45, something along the lines of that. Another pair of denim jeans that I absolutely love, again, mom style. Pick whatever denim is going to last you forever that are not too trendy, too much different, they're not a crazy color or whatever, get like a regular wash of denim. I wouldn't go super light or a black, absolutely. Topshop mom jeans, I love them. They are not 100% cotton. However, I have owned these for a very long time. They held up so well. They've lasted me for years. I honestly can't think of the last time that I burned through a pair of denim. I've owned my Levi's forever. I've owned these Topshop forever. The Zara are new, but so what's to say that the quality or anything like that isn't up to par necessarily as something that's worth hundreds of dollars. This is just my specific belief. However, I do appreciate a very expensive pair of denim. Now, if you want it into your capsule wardrobe, like I said, a black pair of denim, these ones are the A Gold uh, or the A Goldy. These are the 90s boyfriend, dad fit, something along the lines of that. Uh, these are the ones that have the rips in them. Now, a ripped pair of jeans have been in style for years. They're always in style and finding a pair that suit you and your body type and everything. These ones are amazing. I love them. I can't see me not wearing them. I love a pair of ripped denim. Of course, not all the time, but let's just say you have one pair of good denim and one pair of ripped jeans. I love the aesthetic of them. They're very, very much so, I would say, not even something on trend for me right now. I've owned ripped denim, especially like Levi's and stuff like that for, I, oh my gosh, I would say almost the last like 10 years. I don't see these leaving anytime soon. They're not just a fast trend or anything like that for me and my personal style. And I love them. I think that you can dress up ripped denim. Of course, that does have limitations, but nonetheless. Granted, however, I do own ones that are from Levi's or whatever that are more affordable. And Zara has the mom jeans in a rip style as well. 
Honestly, the only reason that they're not in this video is because they ran out of my size and I couldn't order any because I would have absolutely purchased those ripped denim as well. And I think it would have been just as effective. Actually, as far as investment pieces go, I bought the exact same pair, but in a lighter wash. Again, I'm not showing you multiple pairs of jeans right now to say that in order to have a capsule wardrobe, you need to go and purchase multiple pairs. These A Goldies and the Zara and the Topshop, my absolute favorite denim. So let's talk tank tops. So I think a classic tank is essential. However, I can't think of the last time that I reached for a tank over a bodysuit. I never ever wear anything untucked really. I would say honestly ever. I can't think of the last time I left something untucked. Whether that's a full tuck or a French tuck, which a French tuck is just tucking in the little front piece. It makes my legs look longer. Again, best for my body type and how to make myself look taller or thinner or complement my curves and stuff like that. But in my last video, which I can link, I did a Zara haul, which means that I actually showcased the black version of this, but this is the white one. I think that a white tank top is crucial. A rib tank top is... I can't see it. A ribbed tank top is also perfect for a capsule wardrobe. I just pick something that suits you and fits you best, something that you could maybe dress up or dress down, and you could get an outfit out of no matter what the occasion is. I just happen to think the Zara one is absolutely perfect. The material is gorgeous. It looks dressier, but also I can wear it very casually and it doesn't look weird at all or anything. And I love the cut of it. I think it's very flattering. So yeah, I would definitely say a bodysuit or a tank top, it's your call. The perfect white t-shirt. Oh, it is an endless battle. I have owned very, very many different white t-shirts. I would say that one of my favorite ones I actually got from Aritzia a few years ago. I do still own it in black and in gray. And I bought those over 10 years ago. However, I also have owned this Gildan shirt. I got this from Michaels and I think I got it for $5. This is just a unisex t-shirt. I got it in size small and it's perfect. The sleeves are not too long. However, it doesn't really matter because I love a rolled up sleeve and having the ones that are the right fit are absolutely perfect. This one I have washed a lot so it's quite soft and everything. You're gonna need a pair of dress pants. I would assume at least, I think that everybody should probably own one pair of dress pants. These ones are from my Zara haul, which again, I can put the link down below for you, but these ones are absolutely perfect. They are very cinched, really Really nice material, the belt is beautiful, I love the way that the leg is, it suits me, it suits my body type. A more straight leg would also be a very classic and timeless look that you're gonna have for all of forever. For on sale, I got them for 25 bucks. I, you can't really go wrong, but it's a beautiful pant. Hugs you and compliments your body in all the right ways that I would say a dress pant should. I live in Canada and it is cold, I would say the majority of the time here. Raining or it's winter, it's one or the other. It's still not essential or anything for me to include, let's say shorts. I don't really consider them part of a capsule wardrobe. However, depending on your climate, they very well might. So if you wanted to include like a denim short or like a more dressy kind of pair of shorts, that's your call. If that's part of your capsule wardrobe, you do you. But for me, it's more of like a skirt or a dress, which we will get into. When you are going for something that is say a really simple but classic pattern, this is actually from H&M. I love the material. It's actually beautiful quality. And I love the wear that I get out of this. I could dress this up. I could dress this down. It's black and white. So it's going to match with pretty much everything. I'm not really going to struggle to find an outfit that goes with this, but I think that just like a cute classic skirt is amazing. I would say that I love like a black kind of more like a circle skirt, a little bit more of that sort of silky or satiny kind of fabric that would also be perfect. Let's talk about dresses here. So I do have a few different options for you that I think would be great recommendations for kind of style. So this dress here, people talk about fast fashion and stuff, but damn, I bought this five years ago, I would say, and it's still one of my favorite dresses. It's long it's flowy it's super cute multiple options here it's great neutral color it's a great neutral pattern it's never really gonna go out of style and I've gotten so much wear 
out of this dress. I think it's absolutely perfect for a capsule wardrobe. Something similar, I mean, it doesn't have to have the stripe, it could have any pattern, it could be blank, whatever, but I think that the overall fit and look of it is exactly what you should be looking for when you're kind of gearing towards a dress that you're gonna get tons of wear out of. I would say that this is great because this would be a perfect office dress just as much as it would be great for summer, spring, lunch, whatever. Like you could go out and you could wear this like just casually with your friends or it could be something that's a little bit more businessy as well. It's one of those materials that is just very, very versatile. The pattern on it is not quite polka dot. It is not quite an animal print. And I love the dropped wrapped neck. I think it's super flattering. And the length of it is still really nice. It hits above the knee, so not quite cutting me off at this weird angle or anything. If you wanna get crazy, wild, out of this world, not really, you could just wear something a little bit more like this dress. So I am wearing this dress today, which again was part of my haul from my previous video. When you are gonna grab a dress that either has a little bit more risk to it, I would say that a dress is one of those places where you can actually get away with that concept. This style of dress has been around for a really long time. For my skin tone, it's something that I would say that I could pair with absolutely anything, whether it's black, white, brown, nude, you know what I mean, blue. It does have some interesting detailing on it. So subtle enough because it's the same color palette that it's not going to draw your eye away too too much overwhelm or look too trendy let's talk jackets again depending on your weather i would say that a jacket might or might not be up there but here again in canada it gets pretty freaking cold i'm definitely lucky like i said to live in Kelowna, where it is more like we call it the california of canada so it's definitely more warm weather i don't live in banff anymore where it was winter nine months of the year where i needed a floral length puffer jacket so that i mean i do own one of those it is essential to me in certain ways but i figured for the sake of this video Maybe not, but you know, a good winter jacket. Owning something that's more of like a trench or a wool longer style, something that goes at least to like the knee, mid calf, floor length, like a duster, whatever. I do not want to suggest that all of these jackets that I'm about to show you are what you need in order to have a capsule wardrobe. I'm showing you a few different options that you could use for yours. So this one would definitely be more of a lighter kind of like fall, spring, whatever kind of jacket. This could be a layering jacket for winter. I do like to layer a longer coat or whatever over top of a leather Leather jacket that's also a look so it depends on what your vibe is but this black jacket is amazing ah uh, it's Veramoda I got it from the bay I got it extremely on sale I absolutely love it it's oversized it's cool it's a great material alternatively though for winter time a more wooly warmer style coat so something along the lines of this this is not the warmest jacket out of the bunch but it is great um, alternatives would be something from Aritzia or what have you this one is from Zara I love the gray again neutral color something that will go with many many different outfits obviously I would think black would be the easiest thing to pair with absolutely any outfit but sometimes I think with a jacket that's like the one thing where you can kind of get away with doing something a little bit different color wise but this is just one option for you there are obviously so many different ones out there you can get like a tan a nude a black a brown like what have you and all of those will work just fine I wanted to tell you that I do own actually an Aritzia jacket that is pretty well exactly like this however this one is from Old freaking Navy. Old Navy. Who would have thought? It is beautiful. I love it. It looks so rich and great. Any pilling or anything like that, I also have on the Aritzia jacket. It's the exact same. I have one of those little lint eater kind of electric things, an electric shaver, that's what they're called. I have one of those and I use that on this and it looks good as new any point in time. The only places where I really get it are kind of on the sleeve a little bit where I tend to do a bit more rubbing. And yeah, it's a beautiful jacket though. And I'm from the Old Navy. Would I even be Canadian if I didn't talk about this? I mean, a denim jacket? Are you kidding? Of course, of course I have to. I think that denim jackets are so cool. I, of course, I don't necessarily think that you have to, or I often even do wear it as a full Canadian tuxedo. However, that is a look and it is a look that can it can work if you do it right. I'm sorry for the fact that I am wearing this jacket with light wash jeans in this. I did it a little bit because it was funny, but also, I mean, it could work. It could be fine. Um, this one is a winterized version, so it does have the kind of Sherpa-y inner lining to it. This jacket is 
also from Old Navy. It is a complete dupe for the Levi's one. Uh, there are a few out there that are very similar. I saw this and I died. I couldn't believe it. It looks identical to more expensive ones. It's actually amazing quality. It fits great. Um, I actually got it in a large because I wanted it to be a little bit more oversized, which is typically how I wear all of my jean jackets, denim jackets, what have you. And I love the wash. It's beautiful. It's warm. It's great. I have zero complaints about this. It is such a staple in my life. I don't know anybody who doesn't own, I would say, some form of a denim jacket. And I think it's great. I definitely did talk in my previous video about my new boyfriend style leather jacket. However, I did mention that I have a more fitted one. So this one is also from Zara. I do not necessarily abide by the rule that you have to own a real leather jacket. Obviously vegan leather works too. There are amazing quality ones out there. Do whatever feels right for you. So this is a jacket from Zara. I bought this years and years and years ago and it has lasted, it's in perfect condition. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. it you could put a tag on it and say it was brand new. I love the detail detailing on the side shoulders here and like I guess bicep upper arm and it has this kind of moto I don't even know stitching <laughs> to the side of it that I think is really cool I love the biker style of course you do not have to get a biker style leather jacket if you want something that's a little bit more put together more polished more professional that is your call whatever suits you that way it's more just that a leather or faux leather jacket is what I mean by the situation I'm just a biker jacket kind of gal this is from my previous video from my Zara haul. This is the boyfriend leather jacket and I absolutely love this. It's still fitted in all the right places but has a looser kind of dynamic to it and I think it's super cool. So I'm putting it in here as an option. I obviously know that there are more expensive ones out there. I believe that this one was in the two, 300 kind of mark. That is decently expensive for a leather jacket. It's great. Again, I bought my previous one. It's lasted me many, many years and I felt really confident in buying another leather jacket from Zara. However, obviously there's other brands you could go with like Aritzia, Revolve, or whatever you wanted to do and you could find a higher price spectrum for sure. You can end up spending thousands of dollars on a leather jacket. Do I think it's necessary? Not really. Let's talk about a blazer. I think that a blazer is an amazing staple item for a capsule wardrobe. You could do, again, any type of cut, any type of color. I would suggest obviously black, but this one, as you can see here, is just a little bit more of a sort of checked kind of material, uh, plaid. This is exactly the type of blazer I was looking for. It's the exact type of material I was looking for. I wanted something that was a little bit more almost like a jacket, actually. It's, it's not really like that outer shell material that a lot of blazers can have. It is more of like a jacket style blazer. It was an exact dupe for the exact thing I was looking for, which ended up being hundreds of dollars. And I got this for significantly cheaper. Alternatively, you could just steal whatever one is in your boyfriend or husband's closet like I have here. This is Kyle's jacket and it is a navy blue actually, but it has a little bit of like black to it as well. And I actually really like the little shoulder pads in it. Um, Kyle is not a massive guy, what can I say? But I love stealing tops from him. He does not have an eclectic wardrobe whatsoever, but this jacket was super cute. And I thought that it was an excellent way to make my point as far as a blazer, jacket style, whatever that you could borrow out of your boyfriend or husband's closet, which again is much more cost effective than buying your own. So why the heck not? A button up white blouse. Freaking key to life. Now, there are many, many different styles out there, whether you want something a little bit more structured, uh, if you want it to be a looser, kind of more gentle fit. This one is a little bit, again, looser. This one is from Aritzia, actually. I did work at Aritzia at, for one day. I worked at Aritzia for one day hell-ish day. It was the worst job ever and I worked for three hours and I quit immediately after I bought some stuff with my sweet discount. So <laughs> I, it was the worst job. <laughs> anyway, um, however, I do love Aritzia for their clothing and all of that, but man oh man. This is a Tallulah shirt and I have owned this for years. Oh my gosh, when I say I worked there for one day, I mean I worked there for one day like seven years ago, so that was quite a while ago. Um, but this this shirt is amazing. It's lasted me forever. It's very, very soft. It's actually quite long. I did tuck it in. Going to suit absolutely everything. You could dress this up, you could dress this down, you could wear no pants with it like I do, run around in socks and sunglasses. Just do whatever your heart's content is. Guys, do I even gotta say it? A turtleneck. I 
doing all the turtlenecks, to completely honest. Winter time, I'm a turtleneck queen. That is my jam. I love wearing a turtleneck where like my hair is tucked into it. This one in particular though is a standard black stretchy thinner material. It's not like a full sweater. I didn't want it to be too, too hot. I like that with a turtleneck you could layer it, you can wear it on its own. Obviously this is not something I would wear in the summer, but pretty much every other season I can get away with wearing a turtleneck here in Canada. So this one is essential. You guys are gonna die. I think I paid six dollars for this turtleneck and it's my favorite. It fits exactly how I want it to. It's perfect in every way. It's extremely soft. It's just perfect. It's the perfect turtleneck and I paid six dollars for it. Second hand is great as well, you know. Uh, I'm sure you could find a turtleneck second hand, no problem. Same with like denim and stuff like that. Like I found some gems going to second hand stores. I very, very rarely get rid of clothes because they're actually damaged or anything. I do it because they're either not my style, you know, I've upgraded, I found something that's a little bit more fitted or a little bit better quality or whatever. I just don't wear the item anymore. The color is not right, something along the lines of that. Somebody out there will appreciate the crap out of it. So donate your stuff after you're done with it, but man, Sick box. Are you kidding? Are you kidding me? Speaking of secondhand, I actually got this sweater, which I believe this is actually from Dynamite, hilariously enough, but it, I got it secondhand and it was in perfect condition. Um, I would say a sweater, <laughs> though. A sweater is a obviously key part to, I would say, many, many people's wardrobes. I think that a classic color, one that is, you know, able to dress up again, able to dress down. That is the whole point. You can wear this really casually with jeans. I could very, very easily wear this, though, with dress pants and it would look lovely. I do love a crew neck. I am a crew neck kind of gal, but something about this sort of wrap over style one, I really, really like this sweater and I think it's really flattering. It does have a little kind of cinched waist part in here that I either tuck in or fold up. It's a little bit more of a dolman sleeve sweater and I do love it. Whatever sweater you decide to add to your capsule wardrobe, make sure that it's something that you could wear with anything. Again, capsule wardrobe is all about picking items where you could pair it with any sort of outfit. Um, I could wear this with a skirt if I wanted to easily. I could wear it over top of a dress if I wanted to warm up a little bit, stuff like that. That's what you're looking for here. Something that is versatile and multi-use and that you're gonna get tons of actual use out of. Now, where in the world would we be if we didn't talk about shoes? I would definitely say that the number one most obvious thing that I think that everybody needs in their capsule wardrobe is a black boot. I would not necessarily say a high boot. Um, if that is your jam, if you are a high, like a thigh, knee high, whatever kind of boot gal, then go for it. If that is your, like part of your daily uniform that you want a high boot, get it. I mean, I do own a pair. I just would not consider it part of my capsule. However, something like this. So a black booty, you can style it with pretty much anything. They're classic. Getting something that either does or doesn't have a pattern to it. I don't really think that anything of that croc style or whatever, as long as it doesn't have multicolored patterns in it, is ever gonna do you wrong. A full smooth leather or something with a little bit of pattern to it, nothing wrong with that. I think that they are crucial. They're gonna go with so many different things. I could go with a white boot. Now, a white boot, I also think, is extremely classic looking. Do not really find them to be a trend. I know that they're a little bit more popular now, and I guess if you were to categorize that as trending, that's your prerogative. However, I've owned plenty of white boots, shoes, whatever, before, and I do think that they're classic. I think that the way that they're being styled now and how they're being made has kind of been upgraded. But nonetheless, this boot is almost the exact same as the black one. These ones are Veramoda, actually. Yeah, I got these for 40 bucks and I'm obsessed with them. I think they're so freaking cool. Showing you these shoes, I am kind of showing you one color versus the other. However, if I were to only be able to choose one, I would pick black. The other thing would be a different style of boot. So like a combat boot here. I have a pair of Doc Martens that I absolutely love. I wear them all the time. I will wear these with a skirt. I will wear them with shorts. I will wear them with pants, whatever. I guess the only thing I probably don't wear them with is dress pant, but that's what the other boots are for. So when it comes to a Doc Martin, I think that these are super cool. These ones are the more shiny kind of structured leather. Um, the soft leather is also really, really nice, but these are great for winter, summer, every single season. I think they're amazing. And I will never not have a pair of Doc Martens in my capsule wardrobe. But just for the fun of it, these white ones, again, I did just get these. I don't really know if there will ever be a time that I don't love a white boot. I actually do own the platform white Doc Martens and 
I have never worn them. The reason being was that I actually don't like the black sole on them. Something about it is just too much contrast going on, which is why when I saw these, now I know in a way they kind of look like they could be those kids light up shoes. And I'm here to tell you that I'm not mad at it. I don't think. They're more of a conversation piece. They are a little bit more different. I like that they have the clear sole on them. I think that was what was really bothering me about the platform ones. So I'm actually gonna get rid of those ones and I'm gonna keep these. These are like a new staple item in my wardrobe and I think that they're gonna be part of my capsule wardrobe as well. Oh wait, freaking sneaker, of course. Number one thing I am gonna say and I'm gonna fully admit to you, it does not matter how much money I spend on a good pair of white sneakers. I could spend a thousand dollars. I could spend ten thousand dollars. I could spend five dollars and I'm gonna scuff them. I'm gonna get them dirty. I don't care if they're leather. I don't care if they're canvas. Whatever they are, the laces, the soles, something on them is gonna get dirty. So I would say when it comes to shoes, a white pair of shoes is definitely the number one thing that I replace the most. However, I will not stop because I love them. So these ones are my Vans. Vans are definitely my favorite type of sneaker. I absolutely love them. Obviously like a Converse, whatever, something like that. But I think the Van in this sort of style particularly looks really cute with a dress. It looks good with jeans. Um, I think that Converse can look ever so slightly more casual. And even though I love that look, having something that can still look cutesy and girly. Honestly though, it doesn't really matter what type of white shoe you're wearing. I just think a full white sneaker is key to your capsule wardrobe. Of course a heel. Was it a black heel or a nude heel? And I went with a nude heel. I know what you're thinking, but I think that having a heel in your skin tone especially is so important and I think even more important than even a classic black heel. I know, I know, I know. Now the great debate here is whether you want an open or a closed toed. I opted for open. I know what you're thinking, it's craziness, but I just honestly haven't found a pair of closed toed in the nude color that I love as much as I love these. these are from spring. I think I paid 20 bucks for them or something. I bought them on a whim for a wedding and they ended up being some of my favorite shoes. The other concern here is that they do have the ankle strap. However, they are high enough and the actual strap itself, the color of the shoe, is so close to my actual skin tone, which is the key here, that it doesn't cut off my leg. It doesn't cut it off and make it look stumped or anything. That is the one problem that can happen with these. However, I could just pull the strap out and not use it at all, but because I matched it so well color wise, it's sort of perfect and it doesn't cut off the length of my leg. And finally, we have purses. I don't think too small or too big. I do like this one. This is bordering on the side of too big, but I do think it's perfect. This is gonna fit pretty much everything I needed to. This is classic, timeless. It doesn't have any logos or anything on it. This one actually is from Zara from a few years ago, and it is still, again, perfect condition. I absolutely love it and I use it. Doesn't matter what shape or anything like that. Again, I would say stick more to the sort of mid-size, nothing too, too tiny, nothing too big, as long as you can fit your essentials in it, you're good to go, and you're never gonna worry about trying to find something to match your outfit. <laughs> now alternatively to that, something like this, so a belt bag, I do think that belt bags obviously came back into fashion in more recent years. I just don't really see them ever going anywhere. They have really made their way into being very fashionable, not looking too, too trendy. They don't look too dorky anymore. And I think that they can really dress up an outfit or really complement something style-wise. I do have this one in this cognac color and I do have a nude one. It's hiding somewhere. I don't even know where it is right now. But I love a good little belt bag. I will absolutely wear it as like fanny pack style around my waist, but I really like wearing it over the shoulder and around up here. I think it's really complimentary. So anything in like a brown, a black, a nude, you know what I mean, your neutral color, something like that. This is perfect. It fits my phone, my wallet, my keys. It is legitimately just big enough to fit all of my essentials into it and I absolutely love it. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. Please do not forget to hit the subscribe button as well as the bell. Leave a comment. Let me know what you loved about my capsule wardrobe, what you didn't love about it. What's your favorite piece in yours? I would absolutely love to know and get to chatting with you in the comment section. I post videos every Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. So I guess I'm gonna see you in my next one.